Hello, my name is Bill McGowan, Principal of Winnicott High School, and in the video presentation, uh, we will discuss the uh, hybrid learning model and what uh, will be expected of students and staff as we return to in-person learning next week. So the benefit of the hybrid learning model is that we can have students in the building um, in a smaller number um, to receive instruction and also uh, students will be at, at home receiving instruction. So on the days that you come to school in person, uh, you will be in the building two to three days per week and you will follow uh, the schedule and attend your classes and the learning uh, will include what typically you would do um, in class in the past. Students at home, and this will be two groups of students. Um, it will be the students that have chosen to be in person, but those are the two days that they are at home, and also those students that have chosen to remain in the enriched virtual learning environment. In this case, um, you will participate in real-time uh, classroom instruction and also complete independent activities. Uh, what students do need to remember is that they need to attend each class, whether they're in person or at home and or in the remote uh, enriched virtual learning environment, that they need to check in um, every day with the teacher. Based on that uh, check-in, uh, teachers will direct you what to do. The hybrid learning schedule, like I said, students will be divided into two cohorts. Uh, those cohorts will be broken down alphabetically. A through L will be together, and then M through Z will be together. Students will attend school uh, two consecutive days. So, for example, next week when we start uh, this on Monday, January 11th, A through L students will come into the building on Monday and Tuesday, and then M through Z students on Monday and Tuesday will be learning from home, as will the enriched virtual learning students. And those students that are remote, uh, you'll be expected to participate in class in the class daily uh, during the schedule class time. You'll have to check in, watch the lesson, complete assignments during the class period. The bell schedule will be from 7.30 to 2.30. Uh, from 7.30 to 8 o'clock will be teacher prep time and the buses will be uh, dropping students off at school at 7.35. We will have the office hours uh, daily. Uh, we'll run from 1.40 to 2.30 and that will be available for the students that are in the building. That's scheduled time with teachers um, when they're in the building and also for those students that are remote can schedule time uh, with, the, with the teachers. As I mentioned, attendance will be taken daily for students, so students need to attend whether, whether you're in person and or remote. Uh, buses will leave at the end of the scheduled classes, um, which is at 1.35 p.m. Uh, that's at the conclusion of block five or block six, depending on the day. And we will also have a late bus that will leave after office hours at 2.35. Uh, the schedule um, also includes warrior block, uh, which will be uh, also the time that students attend lunch, but uh, provide a period of time for students to receive additional help. Uh, this is the daily uh, bell schedule, um, and again, there's still the A day and the B day, the red day. Uh, students will attend blocks three, four, and five, and on the blue days, students will attend blocks one, two, and six, and then lunch and warrior block uh, will, be between, uh, will be provided during the day. Um, office hours will occur from 1.40 to 2.30. Similar to the schedule that we have now, uh, the only difference is that lunch and warrior block are at different times. The expectations for students. Um, students are required to attend all classes during, during the scheduled time. Students that are remote will have to log into the Google Classroom and complete all the assignments. Students, please make sure that you com communicate with your teachers. Let us know, let the teachers know, let the administration know, let the guidance counselors know what your needs are and how we can support you. Only come to the building on the assigned days if you're coming in person. And when we're in the building, we need to follow all safety protocols. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible as far as in my mind. And if you come into the building every day, you wear your mask throughout the day, you practice social distancing of six feet or more, we will have no problems throughout. And again, on the days that students are home remotely, uh, engage in those learning activities. Parents and students, we need to make sure that you complete, pick up, complete the pickup patrol every day 
um, a reminder email will be sent out at 715. Um, make sure the students only attend the schools on the assigned days. And if your student is homesick, let us know whether they're in person or remote. Please let us know if your son or daughter is at home sick. Um, and also, if they are at home sick, th sick, they can still continue with the instruction. So depending how they feel, they still have the opportunity, um, if they're sick, to participate in instruction. Um, also, um, like I mentioned to uh, for the students, let us know what your needs are. Let us know how we can support you. Communication will be key. Uh, so please communicate with us, and we will make sure that we communicate with you. A little bit later in this video, students will go through how to enter the building, but the plan is that all students complete pickup patrol prior to coming into the building. Students, when they come into the building, there will be three entrances students will be able to use. The main entrance, the auditorium entrance, and the dining hall entrance. Now the main entrance and the dining hall entrance, those primarily will be used by students coming off the buses. To ensure that we have a smooth traffic flow into the building, grades 9 and 12 will enter through the main entrance when they come into the front of the building. Grades 10 and 11 will enter through the auditorium entrance when they come into the building. So that is for the students that come into the building, uh, enter the building through the front, um, either coming on the buses and or being dropped off. Students that use the senior lot, those students can enter through the dining hall irregardless of the grade level. Um, as you come into the building, we will ask you if you completed pickup patrol. We have a list. If you have not, we will ask those screening questions here and also take your temperature. So um, while it's a backup plan, it is not the main plan that we want to use. We will remind you, but the plan is that every day you need to complete, complete the pickup patrol. Um, in the building, um, as you walk around, masks need to be on at all the time. Maintain the social distancing. Uh, we will have arrows and directional signs on the hallways. Please follow those. Uh, there will be no eating in the classroom. Uh, limited drinking will be uh, possible. Um, cleaning, again, hand, sanit hand sanitizers will be available in the classrooms and the hallways. Uh, practice uh, safety, uh, good hygiene. Use those sanitizers to clean your hands. Um, we have increased the HVAC and air filtration, uh, so we will be circula circulating the air to make sure that we have clean air throughout the building. Uh, restrooms will be clean throughout the day. Um, and in the classrooms, it's going to be the responsibility to work with everybody to ensure that the classrooms are clean. Teachers will have uh, spray and wipes in the classroom, so they will be working with stu students uh, to clean uh, the desk. Um, as students come and go into the building. Um, and we also have a uh, sanitizing cycle in the evening. We will go through and spray down all the classrooms. Uh, lunch. Lunch will be based on grade level in conjunction with uh, Warrior Block. Um, so different grade levels will go to lunch at specific times. In the lunchroom, we will have plexiglass dividers set up on the tables, so the tables will only be able to seat four students. Uh, students will also have the opportunity to um, use the benches in the hallways to eat lunch. And we are providing open campus for both juniors and seniors that if they want to leave uh, campus during lunch, they may do so. And this is the schedule that we're going to start um, on Monday, January 11th. As I said, A through L will be in person on Monday and Tuesday and M through Z students um, and those students that have maintained in the enriched virtual learning will be attending class remotely. On the 13th and 14th, uh, M through Z students that uh, are in the in-person model will attend school and it'll just every two days it changes with your letter of the alphabet. So the students, I, I want to thank the students that you will see in the video um, momentarily uh, for their input, for their guidance and support. Uh, they have done a great job and I know we will get through this. This is going to be a new experience for everybody. Um, I, we are excited to move forward. We are looking forward to see you uh, next week. But again, two things to remember, 
wear your mask out all the time and maintain the social distancing and we'll get through this together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tyler Hughes, student body president. On behalf of all of student council and your student government representatives, we're excited to welcome you back to school. However, the only way we can continue to be in the building safely is if we commit to following the protocols outlined in this video while in the building and commit to remaining safe outside of the building by practicing common sense COVID-19 protocols, such as wearing a mask, hand washing, social distancing, and refraining from large gatherings. Together, we can make our school experience in the building a healthy and safe one. Welcome back, Warriors. I'm excited to see you around the halls. At the start of each school day, the building will be open for the students at 7.30. Pickup patrol must be completed prior to entering the building by parents, teachers, and staff. Students will enter through the front door or dining hall door. If their first class is in the gym, tech ed building, or ROTC, they may go directly there and confirm the completion of pickup patrol. If they did not complete pickup patrol, they will have to come back to the main building to be screened. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks. And your name, please? Tyler Hughes. Hi. Hey, you are, Tyler. You're all set. Please These checkpoints will be monitored by nurses and administrators who have real-time access to pickup patrol. Emery Jacobs. They can see who has and has not completed the screening. If pickup patrol has not been completed, then the student will be screened through a temperature check and answering a series of questions at the door by nurses and administrators. These are the same questions you would see on pickup patrol. Okay, you're good to go to your class. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Now for masks. There are right ways and wrong ways to wear a mask. Make sure your nose and mouth are covered at all times. Hey Emery, cover your nose! Thanks Tyler for calling me out on that, it's important. This is a correct example of a mask you can wear to school. Please do not wear gaiters, or buffs, or bandanas. You can see the nurse for a correct mask. Try to stay six feet away from each other when walking in the hallway, even if it's with your friends. Hey Tyler, how long is that pole? Six feet! About one me, or one Mr. McGowan, is how far you should be away from me. There will be arrows along the hallways that will mark the direction of travel. Bagged breakfasts and lunches will be available in the cafeteria. Students will have lunch by grade level. In combination with lunch, students will attend Warrior Block. Plexiglass dividers have been installed on the cafeteria tables, allowing four students per table. The tables are spaced six feet apart. Tables will be wiped down by the food service workers in between lunch periods. Breakfast and lunch will be provided for all students, online and in person, at no cost. Wait, you're telling me it's free? Yeah. Whoever said there is no such thing as a free lunch has never been in a pandemic. Up to 25 students can come to the library at once. If you're before class, have an ELO or a pass from a teacher, or if you're a senior with a free block. You can't come to the library during warrior blocks, lunches, or study halls. When you get to the library, you'll see this QR code here. And all you need to do is scan it, and on your iPhone, you'll get a notification. Press open the Google Docs link. I need to unlock my phone. And you'll come up with the Holly Library sign-in. And you fill that out to enter the library. Tables in the library will be numbered. You'll have to identify where you're sitting and stay there while you're in the library. You can study, read, or work on projects for your classes, but you shouldn't wander around the library. They encourage students to use the resources found online at the Holly Library website. But if you decide to go in person to browse the book selection, you're going to need to wear gloves as you look through the books. Holly Library encourages you to print your documents at home. But if you need to print, you can share your documents with the library to do so. If you leave before the end of the block, 
You must sign out using the QR scan to access the attendance form. Students will exit at the back of the library. If you have any questions or need any additional information, please contact the library. If you need to make an appointment with your guidance counselor, please email him or her. They will not be able to accommodate walk-ins unless it is an emergency. Look at Power School to see your schedule as guidance will not be handing out paper copies this year. If you need to do a schedule change or have a schedule question, guidance will still continue to do that through email, Google Meets, and chats. If you have an appointment, please do not walk down the hall to your counselor's office. You will need to sign in and check in with Mrs. Parks at the front desk. She will call your counselor to let them know you are here for your appointment. Due to spacing requirements, guidance counselors can only have one student in each office at a time and must remain six feet apart. And always remember to wear your mask. School dismissal will be at 132. There will be 10 buses lined out up front and you should remain socially distanced as you leave the building. There will be two late buses leaving the building at 235 for students who choose to stay after for extra help, office hours, or library time. On behalf of all Winnicott student body officers and student government, welcome back, Warriors! Welcome back! Woo!